shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dugues Models, and welcome to episode 2 of the P40F build. In this installment, we're going to be focusing on the cockpit and kind of getting it squared away so we can get the fuselage all closed up. And the first thing we need to tackle in the cockpit is the seat. Now, this is the kit seat. It is terrible in every way, shape, or form. There is nothing good about the seat. Uh, if you look at it from the side, the seat pan is basically almost as tall or long or whatever as the back of the seat, which is just wildly incorrect. The shapes are all wonky. The... Yeah, I, I pretty much like nothing about this at all. <laughs> and so, I will not be using it. Now the other option is this CMK resin seat, which is okay. You know, it's got the it's got the uh, it's got the stiffening stamps in it. It's got molded on belts, which eh, you know, better left to one forty eighth in my opinion. But they're not bad. What is annoying is the lightning holes in the little angled ass piece right here are not hollow. They are just little shallow recesses and that's not cool and getting in there to open those up would be a giant pain in the ass so to me that is kind of the main ding on this seat other than that it looks decent if a little bit clunky in terms of detail and i think those stiffeners are a bit heavy-handed for example so what i will be going with instead and thank god i experienced one of these on a, on a couple p47s is edwards photo etched seat. Now, this was more of a pain in the ass than the ones on the P47s because A, it has those stiffeners that you have to deal with, and you have to deal with those by basically embossing from the outside, which involves essentially taking a ballpoint pen to these little grooves and just running it back and forth until it sticks out on the other side. So they are not as prominent as they are on CMK seat, and they're also facing the other direction, so make of that what you will. I believe that the Edward one actually gets it right. Uh, anyway, that was fun, getting the back of the seat to match this shallow curve with the ass piece and the bottom of the seat was interesting, and as you can see, there's a little fold crease in this thing where that happened. <sighs> Good news is, it's going to have belts on it, and so I'm planning on basically just draping one of the belts over that, and that's going to be what's essentially going to cover that little crease area up, and make it more or less invisible. Now, as for the shiny metal look of this thing, that is 100% thanks to this Gaia Notes Premium Mirror Chrome. This stuff is pretty awesome. It's also pretty damn expensive, but... This is literally sprayed over just the straight brass. There, there was no primer, nothing else, just the brass. And it looks really, really nice. Now, after this sets up for a bit, I am going to come in here and hit it with a clear to protect it a little bit. Because when I was gluing in the ass piece, I got a little bit of glue up on the seat here. And I went to wipe it off with a Q-tip, and it just took everything right off. So, this stuff does take a little bit of time to set up. And the clear will help protect it that little extra bit. So then when I'm adding the belts and weathering it, I don't have to worry about metal just kind of falling off in my hand. So we're in a good spot so far. I'm going to let this thing dry or let it cure overnight. And we'll come back and we'll do some more cockpit adventures. Okay, so here's the Edward seat. Again, painted with Gaia Notes Premium Mirror Chrome. And then given a coat of K-Colors XW60, which is like a semi-gloss. And yeah, it's lost a little bit of that gleam, but honestly, I think it looks pretty damn authentic as just an aluminum seat outside of that little crease that, again, we're going to cover up with a belt. So it's pretty much ready to go for seat belts and weathering and all that good business. And so we're going to set it aside for the moment and look at the rest of the cockpit. 
So something else I took care of off camera is the Edward look panel, which I know when we were first walking through this, I was uh, noting how it seemed super white and super, you know, almost like slightly blue tinged. And so I basically got around that by spraying it with some clear orange, which, as you can see, definitely warmed up and dinged up the white quite a bit. And then I masked off the instrument gauges with some liquid frisket and sprayed this with MRP matte to really bring it down. So I think it's in a pretty decent spot at this point. And it's pretty much ready to be set aside and kind of wait for more fun stuff to happen. So that leaves us with the cockpit. Now this is what I did a while back when I started on this thing. And honestly, for 132nd scale, it's really disappointing. <laughs> um, let's walk through the ways it's disappointing. First of all, the detail. I mean, honestly, that would be maybe okay. Marginal at best in 148th scale. In 132nd, it, no, not at all. On this side, I mean, at least it has a throttle quadrant, but that is a piss poor shit job at doing a throttle quadrant. And again, the rest of it, just, it's a mess. Total mess. The rear bulkhead's actually not too bad, aside from the gigantic headrest. Um, man, that thing is big. But other than that, this thing's pretty decent. You know, there's, there's going to be a seat there anyway, so you're not missing much. Then we have the floor. And the floor, you know, I had a bit of fun weathering this up. We'll do that again. And the rudders, uh, there's an, in the Edwards set, they would have you replace these. I really don't give a shit because rudders are barely ever seen. The floor itself, yeah, again, it's okay. Nothing super great. What kills me, though, is the control stick. I mean, that is just fucking terrible. It's super thick. Uh, doesn't really have any life to it. I don't buy it. It looks like flying the plane with a baseball bat. So, what I have elected to do is to basically scrap all of this. Just move it over here. And because I essentially got a second cockpit when I ordered replacement sprues, I have all the goods to come in here and do something fresh and fun and different. And so we're going to do that. First up, the control stick. That's really bad. So, do, 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 do. Yoink. Okay, we're going to clean this up. And then I went ahead and stole the control stick out of a Hasegawa P47. And yeah, I'm not sure if that kink is exactly there in the P40, but the, the grip is a lot better. The shaft is a much, much better thickness. I mean, you know, just look at these two next to each other. It's night and day. And this thing's already got a little nubbin on the end, so we're just gonna drill a little hole into the thing here at about the same size and just be able to mount it. Pretty cool. Okay, next up, port sidewall. Basically cut off the trim wheel and drilled holes for some 3D printed parts. I'm going to be shaving off probably some of the other details in here, replacing them with actual wiring. There's also a little gauge here. You can see kind of right under the throttle quadrant, which if you look at actual P40s, there's not just a gauge here, but there's actually one of those big red turn dial things in the middle of it. So again, 3D printed parts uh, will help me get to that. The bullshit throttle quadrant will be replaced with photo etch. So I've already got this kind of up and running. I'm not really going to rely too much on the Edward color elements of it, even though we have that right here. Instead, I'm going to paint this and put some stencils on it and go to town that way. The floor has some nice little photo etch appliques in the Edward set, like this piece right here that basically sits... Come on. 
basically sits right here sort of over the fuel gauge and that's all well and good then on this side I basically lost the entire middle of the cockpit sidewall uh, because it's completely incorrect for an F and the Edwards set would have you replace everything with little fucking boxes like this and then glue shit to the top of them and to the front of them and whatnot. And, I mean, I'm fine with maybe one or two PE boxes. But the problem is they're hard to drill into. Uh, I don't want to use the photo, I don't want to use the color photo etch because, let's be honest, it looks like garbage. It doesn't have the right depth or any of that kind of stuff. So, what I'm going to do instead is bust out some styrene and use this to basically scratch build what I need to. So, for example, where did it go? I'm not sure exactly what these are. I believe this is some sort of radio equipment, uh, but it's over on the starboard side of the P40 cockpit, and they're like little dial things with little switches and knobs kind of on and around them. And so I'm just gonna go in, go in here and cut this to, to size and just drop it in place instead. Why not? I kind of do that with some of the other boxes. You know, if they're a little bit big, who cares? It's already so wrong that I can get close enough. So that is the plan. Uh, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to cut away here and come back as necessary, sort of mid-process to show what's happening. Okay, so I've been plugging away a little bit, and here is pretty much where I'm at. So... The seat is basically just for placement only, just so you can kind of see the spacing of everything, how it all works. It'll actually be sitting more like this, and it will not be this seat. Over here, got the various boxes. I've drilled holes for the 3D switches and buttons and things like that. We've got a replacement map case back here. A few little details on the frame of the cockpit. PE boxes down here. I'm going to put some details on top, and I'm just honestly probably just going to have to like slice off the mounts for the uh, the 3D stuff down there. Over here, got the holes drilled for the trim tabs. Got this little power box kind of looking doohickey down here. Uh, I made it a bit thicker. I broke off this awesome thing, so I'm going to have to glue that on its own at some point. Uh, the throttle quadrant is still sitting here. It needs to go through some paint before I start really doing more with it. But it just looks like that. And Anyway, it will sit in here. Kind of like so. I also, as you can see here, replaced the really janky... P40 stick with the P47 stick. That looks much better. For some reason, I'm having a really tough time fitting all the little um, legacy parts from the old build into this one. This guy shouldn't be a problem, though. Watch, I say that. I forgot that the front hydraulic e bit, whatever, of that. Uh, control stick column interferes with the fit of this thing, so now it no longer does. Anyway, there's the instrument panel in there. Uh, the rudders kind of go right back here. And yeah, we're getting there, slowly but surely. So, next up, it is time to prime this, but it is late as shit right now. So, I am going to do one more thing on another project and call it a night. Okay, so not everything is in here, and... The CMK seat is for placement only, just to give you a sense of what a seat looks like in this thing. But here is the cockpit with the various scratch elements and photo etch added. So over here we've got a whole bunch of boxes, we've got some wiring added in, a lot of holes drilled out for where switches are going to go, the landing gear crank has been shaved off and that'll be replaced with photo etch after paint. On this side, we haven't added as much, mainly because the throttle is going to go in here and take up a whole bunch, and there's going to be some throttle linkage shooting off of it forward, but that is going to be uh, 
metal rod and so I'm literally just waiting until I can get stuff installed and get that a bit further along to do that. But I've added this little power box thing down here. I have no idea what it is, uh, but it shows up in reference photos. We've got the trim tab dials and all the various cabling coming off there and sort of filling up that lower region. So now it is time to paint this damn thing. Let me break it apart and we'll bust out some primer. Okay, so the primer I'm using is Moto MK12. Uh, if you've watched the Intruder and the Jug builds, you've probably seen it show up before. Moto is a paint brand out of Taiwan. Very similar to Gaia Notes in a lot of ways. Um, and this stuff sprays very similar to Mr. Surfacer 1500. The big difference is this stuff takes a lot more thinner to be happy. But once you get it to the right level of reduction, everything seems to go wonderfully. So. So it's getting there. Next up, we got port sidewall. Okay, number two. Floor next. Okay, next up, we're going to be doing some interior green. A little bit less PSI. It's not looking too shabby. Compared to the previous color, it's a little bit more muted. I'll take that though. I do like this MRP interior green quite a bit. Okay, so here are all of the cockpit parts with their base coats. Uh, interior green unless it calls for otherwise like the throttle quadrant awesome all right now that we've got the interior green down it's time to start picking out some details so for this i'm using a mix of vallejo glossy black and german gray with a little bit of thinner added Now we need to add a little bit of white for some of the cabling. Which I don't know if it's correct, but it's on the one good reference I have for this area. Okay, now some MRP black leather for the headrest. Okay, one more little bit we're fucking around with before I start adding stencils and getting into the weathering and all that is the throttle body. So, Edward actually does a pretty cool throttle for the P40. Unfortunately, Edward's throttle levers are the typical flat bullshit and so 
I'm replacing them with some wire. I've already got the forward one here glued in. I've got a super super glue ball kind of starting on it. These other two I've just glued in. I need to give them a few minutes to sort of cure up, and then they're also going to get super glue balls. And the way that we do those is take a toothpick or an air pressure needle, something like that. Get some super glue on it, like so. Come in here. And just dab it on. It'll probably take two or three passes to really build up enough, and then when you paint it, it'll look like just a cool knob. Okay, time for a real quick pickup. So I originally painted the headrest in MRP black leather, and then looking at some reference photos, I believe from the actual Curtis plant, I saw some good shots of the headrest, and they were brown. So brown is at least an option. I know that a lot of times in World War II, especially by the time you get the jugs and P-51s, they had switched over to black leather, but brown adds a little bit more interest, makes things more fun, and we can weather it up to look more leathery. So add this. This is a Vallejo leather brown, which is a wonderful color. Okay, so thanks to an audio issue that involved my dumbass knocking a setting off on the microphone and making myself sound like Darth Vader, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a workaround on how I wrap up this particular installment. So I think I'm just going to go with a bit of a quick retrospective and summary of where we're at with the cockpit at this point before we jump into part three, which will be weathering the cockpit. So here we've got the floor and the look panel and all that goodness. Everything here is pretty set. It's green. The instrument panel has the orange clear on it, etc. Then we've got the sidewalls, which have received not only detail painting and a bunch of scratch work, and wiring, and linkages, they've also received stencils. And I actually opted to go with the photo etch trim control wheels, which are not my favorite, but I don't really have anything 3D that matches them, and they look pretty decent from up above. So we're going to go with those. Throttles kind of in place here. I've got the various knobs set in now. I've got the decals. They've got their awesome sheen variants going on that I can't wait to knock down with weathering and flat coats. Over here, we've got some stencil decals in place as well. We've got the gear up down wheel. Got a bunch of holes drilled in here for switch, switches and buttons and knobs. Everything is pretty much going the way it should. The headrest, I've replaced the black leather with brown leather. It's looking pretty decent. Uh, I can't wait to hit this with weathering though, because that's what really makes leather come alive. And lastly, I've got the seat in progress. So it has. One belt, again, coming down, sort of blocking off that awesome crease in the seat itself. The other one, I am hoping to drape outside of the cockpit, hanging over the fuselage. So the reason I put a little bit of wash on the inside here is the back of these belts are just white. And that shouldn't really show the way that it's going to be sitting, but just in case, you know, I want to knock that out. And then I've got the lap belts basically hanging off you know, this one hanging off the front rim of the seat. This one didn't quite have the length to pull that off. So it's more sort of riding up on the forward lip. So that's where that is at. Well, I'd originally hoped to get through all of the cockpit in this installment. But honestly, the video is already running long enough as it is. And with the audio issues, I feel it's probably better just to cut this one short here. Where we're sort of at the end of painting and decal application. And pick up in the next installment with final details, weathering, getting it together, all that good stuff. So, so far I think it's going pretty well, about as well as can be expected with a cockpit that's, you know, this marginal. 
and everything is where it should be and we're all set to go with weathering and adding switches and things like that in episode three. So stick around, watch for that one to come shortly and check you later.